And it's the only part of the game where you don't need strength, you don't need fitness, you just need patience and technology and technique. Anybody can put well. I know a few players at my club, 24 handicap and 18 handicap, probably better putters than Brad Faxon was. <laughs> but can they hit the ball on the fairway? No. Can they get out of a bunker? No. You get them on the green and they can do the damage. So those guys are rare, but most good golfers are not really looking at spending 200 or 300 dollars on a putter shaft. They go, hmm, that's expensive. So how much you pay for your driver? $400? How many times you hit the fairway? How many times does it make you any money? Very rare when you're an amateur. Golf Smarter numbers 798. This week's episodes of Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans are brought to you by DynamicGolfers.com. Get a seven-day free trial and 15% off your membership with checkout code GOLFSMARTER. Don't let equipment failure get in your way of being a better putter with Raymond McMahon. This is Golf Smarter, sharing stories, tips, and insights from great golf minds to help you lower your score and raise your golf IQ. Here's your host, Fred Green. Well, thank you for reaching out to me. Yeah, you're welcome. I've looked, I've listened to a lot of your podcasts and, um, I just thought it was probably a change if if you you went across the pond and did a bit of investigation over here. Well, that's I'm not so sure that's going to be happening. <laughs> I someday I'd like to make it across the. Uh, I've I've never been to England. I've never been to the UK, which I'm embarrassed. Really? Yeah, I'm embarrassed oh. to say that, but I've never been to the UK. Hmm. Well, I'm mainly, I was mainly referring to um, the podcast, to be honest, but uh, I'm surprised you haven't been over to the UK. Have you been over to Europe? Many times. Yes, I have been to Europe. I've been to, uh, I think I've been on every continent except Antarctica. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, you're not missing anything there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, didn't get a chance to travel much in 2020, but nobody did. No, 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 I didn't travel only at all. But uh, yeah, so, but the Golf no, Smarter yeah. podcast, we do have an audience in the UK. Um, actually, uh, outside the United States, our most popular countries are Australia, Canada, and UK. Hmm. Yeah, they might listen to you, but what I mean is you've never had a, a podcast related to us, I don't think, have you? you oh, know, yeah. Using... Have you? Who, who, uh, who have you uh, spoken Dan, to? Danny Maud, most recently. Danny Maud uh, is a, a YouTube instructor, but he's out of uh, just out of London. And he's been on All multiple right. times. And I have had various other teachers on the show that have uh, come from across the pond. All right. Now, one, of the, one of the guys I work with, um, especially at the moment because of the two products that I've got, you know, coming out of the woodwork, is Danny is a lad called Andy Gorman. Well, Andy Gorman's very well known in the UK for his, he's a putting and short game coach, but mainly known for his putting. And um, he's probably, he, I would say he was a, an extrovert in, in, in the industry because he, he's a bit of a non-conformist, <laughs> which, which I happen to like, to be honest. Oh, I bet you do. Um, what makes him a non-conformist? Well, when I say nonconformist, he's not traditional. He's he's got he's got his own views on how you put. To be honest, it's not that it's he's a nonconformist. It's just that most of the conventional putting gurus, they're all pretty much the same. But Andy's very biomechanic, and um, you've got to stand in the right posture, and you, you, your club's got to have sixty eight degrees lie angle. He's very um, into all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I believe everything he says. To be honest, I quite like him. He's, uh, I work really well with him. Very good. So, but he's an he's an interesting guy. He's an interesting guy to have on a podcast because, first of all, he'll speak for an hour if you want him to, <laughs> and uh, 
And secondly, he will probably be able to answer anything you ask. Well, I love talking about putting, so um, I will I will put a note here to uh, to try to reach out to him. Maybe you can make an introduction. Well, I was, yeah, I was gonna, you know, I was gonna suggest that maybe that you could include the podcast in, like I mentioned in the short message, with uh, younger players starting off in golf, coming from because I've had that experience with my grandson who played for England got in a 16 uh, Walker Cup squad and he won the Lytham Trophy, which is one of the major amateurs in Europe. Um, and now he's just turned pro and he's his first Euro pro event today. He started today. And so, so what? Are, wait, your grandson is starting in his first Euro event today and you're on the phone with me? Yeah, you're, <laughs> yeah I know, but you're not allowed to go. There's no oh. visitors. Oh, okay. It's still, it's still the COVID restrictions over here. We're not like the USA yet. Yeah. They're not even allowing. They're not even allowing coaches. Oh, it's amazing! Wow, wow. Well, they don't allow him during the course, but still, he'd want to talk to him. But congratulations if he's he's won events and he's doing well. You must be very excited about that. Well, I am because he's four under through ten today, so I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but still, it, you know, the the pride just for your grandchild. That's that's pretty remarkable. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, he's he's working his way up the ladder now, and hopefully he'll, he'll maybe be on the TV one of these days soon. That would be fun. And are you responsible yeah. for him falling in love with golf? Yeah, pretty much. I, I, I've worked with him for six years. I was his caddy for six years and, and his manager, and still his manager. And I, I was responsible for getting his fund into to keep the the dream alive, it's very expensive for a, an amateur in this country to continue as a full time amateur. It's basically eight to nine hundred dollars a week. Wow! You know, by the time you take travel in hotels, food, and all that stuff, it's it's a lot of money. Yeah, it is, and and I don't think people realize that. I mean, other sports, you're paid by somebody. Just to show up, right? You're on, if you're on a team sport, but, yeah. with, but with golf, you're responsible for all of it. Every penny of it comes out mm. of your pocket. So unless you're winning, it can be very expensive to be on any tour. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Josh has Josh has signed a contract with Titleist, so he's oh. a Titleist contract player to to begin with, and that's good because he's been with them since he was eighteen. And uh, they looked after him, you know, they gave him balls originally and then it moves up the ladder and then he gets some shoes and then, then he gets clubs, depending on how far he gets up the ladder. Mm-hmm. And right up until the end of his career, he was getting everything he needed. So that's, And he's got that same deal now, which is very really good. Does he share the same last name as you? Yes, yes. Okay, so he's Josh McMahon. Yeah, no, Josh McMahon, yeah. We call him Joshua on tour because there's quite a few Joshes around. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so when we sign it, we say Joshua, Joshua, but he, everybody calls him Josh. Okay. Awesome. So, um, I'm going to, uh, let me just take a pause for a second. This episode of Golf Smarter is brought to you by DynamicGolfers.com. So I've started month number three of my morning Dynamic Golfers workout and was quite impressed to find out that even though I've been doing yoga on and off for decades, this month includes new positions that I've never even heard of or done before. But what really impressed me was that these are stretches that I can definitely see the long-term benefit as a golfer. And can we talk about the benefits? Last week, I reported to you that I've stopped using the single-length irons and have returned to the irons that I was originally fit for a couple years ago. Not only am I hitting the ball farther, but my consistency has also improved. Last week, I shot my third lowest score ever, a 75 on a par 71 peacock gap. And yes, my lowest score has an asterisk because it was during COVID and the cups were sticking out of the ground and all I had to do was brush by the cup. And so I shot a really one over for the day, but I don't 
shoot that that area very often. <laughs> but there were a couple of holes that I need to explain. I want to explain to you. How about a par five that sometimes I can reach in two of the three wood? This time I nailed the middle of the green on my second shot with a five iron. And that led to my third birdie on the front nine, including one out of a bunker. So the front nine included three bogeys, three pars, three birdies, even par after nine. Then I had pars on 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, but a DeChambeau blow up on 17. Oh, I know it's mean to call it a Deshambo blow up, but when he was asked about it, he said, hey, that's golf. So I'll take the lead on that. And a bogey on 18 that included a lost ball in the water, then a bunker shot that put the ball eight inches from the cup for a bogey. Well, why am I telling you this? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, there's not many people I share this stuff with, especially at home, but I get to talk to you. And two, besides the right clubs and a better swing, I was feeling loose comfortable, pain-free, and confident. Which brings us to the point of this story, dynamicgolfers.com. Dynamic Golfers has taken the most effective positions of yoga and developed a long-term daily program specifically designed to help golfers become more flexible, fluid, and comfortable with every swing. I encourage you to check them out for yourself and love the feedback I've been getting from you on those who've been using it. Follow their daily video routines and track your progress because you will start seeing results within four weeks. Each video is between 15 and 20 minutes, so it's not a huge amount of your time, but it's really valuable time. For only $9.99 a month, $9.99 a month, you can join golfers worldwide that make dynamic golfers part of their daily routine as well. Go there now to get a seven-day free trial and 15% off your membership when you check out using the coupon code GOLFSMARTER. So please check them out today and let me know what you think. But don't forget, take advantage of their discount offer. Use the checkout code GOLFSMARTER when you sign up at dynamicgolfers.com. Uh, I am recording this conversation, so hopefully we can use it as a podcast coming up soon. I hope you're okay with that. Well, yeah, but yeah, I don't mind. But when, when we do have, if we have a podcast with that, Andy, I think I think you'll probably find it more beneficial because we've got some new stuff coming. I think um, I mentioned to you that I've got a putter that I've patented um, that I claim is the best role that's on you know out there. And uh, I haven't quite. I've got it ready now, and it's out. It's basically out there, but I haven't promoted it yet. And I've got the carbon max shaft, which is the putter shaft, which is really starting to take a grab in the market. I've got three European tour players using it just at the minute, and it's only been on the market a couple of weeks, really. Wow, that's very. So impressive. I'm really pleased about that. Well, yeah, Tightless at some point I it. would. Yeah, I would some point love to get Andy uh, on on the podcast. That'll be separately. Let's just yeah. you and I have our conversation yeah. today. Um, yeah, sure. So, so how long have you been developing putter shafts? Um, probably a couple of years. I started doing it because you know, whilst you're watching a young a young man in his career, you you start to realize where all the faults are, and. Um, Putin has always been that part of the game that doesn't come easy. It's a very complicated part of the game. Really, most people don't understand what's going on when they're on the putting green. But um, Josh got a, we had a good sort of relationship over the last four years when I, we were doing an awful lot of putting research and, and also researching the greens before the event. I was doing a lot of green reading and and drawings on for greens, uh, a bit like the bit like the green books they have now on tour. But I was doing all that myself. After the events, I'd go out at night and and walk the greens again and try and pick up any help I could get, you know, from from my drawings and from my notes. So we're really into greens and and putting and. As I developed it, I decided that I was tired of the uh, 
40-year-old technology in putters. So I decided to design my own, and I also designed my own carbon shaft because the shafts in an average putter are really poor. There's so much deflection in them, so much twist. Uh, it's unbelievable, really. And it's only recently, the last few years, when a few people have started to get wise to the fact. And anyway, I developed mine, and we did some preliminary robot tests a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we're doing another final robot test tomorrow. Um, and I've got Andy Gorman and another independent Quintech um, operator who's come into all the same place, three of us in the same academy, and we're going to do the final test again. And the last time we did it, we tested the uh, Odyssey Stroke Lab. We tested the standard ping-style steel shaft. We tested Scotty Cameron's steel shaft. We tested the stability shaft. We tested uh, KBS steel cutter shafts and uh, a few other standard shafts, and Carbon Mac came out on top. And uh, it was 21% better than stability and 33% better than the Stroke Lab, the Odyssey Stroke Lab. So it can give you some idea why we're a bit excited about it. Uh, Explain to me when you say it was uh, 21% better than... um... And the, in ter- go ahead. In, ter- in terms of deflection and uh, launch angle. Okay, deflection and la- launch angle. Yeah, they're the two most important parts of, of sure. this particular test when you're testing shafts. I mean, of course, Quintech does everything. It does, you know, it does your club face open, close, and all the usual stuff. But the the actual shaft, launch angle... And deflection is the most important. Is there also, I mean, I had a conversation recently with Barney Adams, who's recent, who's also come out with a uh, new putter shaft. And we, he talked about the, um, not just, not just the deflection and launch angle, but the, the vibration on the putter shaft that that's caused and how that can deflect, you know, your putter head. Um, is that what we're talking about here? Yeah, well, when he, he says vibration, I'm not sure what he's talking about there because any vibration in the shaft usually is resonating up up, up the grip. Where, where a lot of where some of the problem is is when you use these um, super stroke type grips that are very spongy. Mm-hmm. They they create they they create deflection. They're, they're something I wouldn't recommend. I don't mean super stroke, but any spongy, any heavy rubbery grip that's got some kind of, if, it's, if you can press your fingers into it, it's a no-no if you want to keep your putter head and your, your putter from deflecting and twisting. Really? That's uh, interesting. So, yeah, yeah, it is. It, it, it's, also, it's just a contributor. But um, the... the um, the, the vibration of the shaft, we don't have vibration of our shafts. That was the word I was looking for. I'm not looking. sure what he, I, what he was using not as a term. And I apologize if I got the word wrong. I may not be quoting him exactly. I'm kind of blanking right now. But, yeah, vibration. I know that we talked about the vibration as well. Um, what were you – I'm th- curious. What were you doing before you started working on these putter shafts? What, uh, what was well, your background? I, I'm retired now. I'm retired, but I am an engineer by trade. So I see. I'm a mechanical engineer. Okay. So I've always, I've, I've been working on golf clubs. I used to be a member of the American Club Maker Society. I lived in Florida for 40 years. Okay. And I, I, I was in the American Club Making Society for about 10 years. And then I left it alone. I came back to the UK. And I've always been back to the UK, but I was in the States for mostly nine months of every year. Wow. And then I came back to my regular residence here. I was a green card holder, a resident alien, as you call us. Um, it's not what I call and, it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's, a, that's a designation. That's a designation, anyway. Yeah, I'm not going to call you an alien. Say that. 
<laughs> now, now that the, now that our government is admitting they're seeing things flying in the air that they can't admit, I'm not going to call you an alien. Okay. Sorry. No, no. There's plenty of other people you could, but you can't call me one. Um, <laughs> and I was in the states, and we had a we had a family business there as well. We built a hotel in Florida, and uh, we ran that for 15 years, and sold it 12 years ago. Huh. Right on Cocoa Beach, Cocoa Beach in Florida. So I'm very familiar with the Americans. I used to go to the the um, Orlando show every year. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been there about probably ten years in succession, up until about five years ago. So this so this concept I've been idea for a long time. Yeah. So this idea of creating a putter shaft has been sitting inside you for quite a while. Well, it, it has, it has, but not. It's not really come to fruition until carbon fiber started to take off, really. And um, although they've been uh, driver shafts for quite a long time and, and iron shafts. The putter shafts have been non-existing, really. Mm-hmm. So I just moved it to that level and because uh, I, I did some deflection tests, manual deflection tests on putters, and I wasn't impressed. So uh, that's why I developed that. I probably developed it before any other shaft was out there, but I didn't have any... I only had a prototype at the time. So I didn't use it for anything. Nobody knew about it, but it was where I was heading. Um, I, I'm not sure what you talk about. LA Golf is that the one that you're talking about with Barney Adams? Um, the Barney Adams. Hang on, let me see if I can get over to that. Uh, I have the shaft sitting over here. Hang on, just one second. I'll be right back. Actually, we'll take a time out right now, and <laughs> I'll come back with the shaft. Mm. Raymond, I am back. Sorry to do that to you. Okay. So, um, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, this is the Stability Tour Black. The shaft is called Breakthrough Golf Technology by Barney Adams. Yeah. Who, who Bar- you know Barney Adams is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that, is that his design? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this that. is a new yeah. design yeah, of his. We've tested that. We tested that against Carbon Mac. Uh-huh. And how did that do? And we, 21%. We were 21% better. Wow, and I think I think, uh, I think after tomorrow, um, Brian. I think after tomorrow and the weekend, and when we have the data all compiled, probably do like a spreadsheet format. Um, it'll be very easy reading. Okay, okay. Well, I um, well, I I'll had send this. You one. Uh, well, yeah, I had this stability. Uh, this shaft is uh, BG. You know, they call it BGT, which is Breakthrough Technology. Yeah. Breakthrough Golf Technology. Yeah. So I had this put on my uh, uh, Lab Golf Direct Force 2.1 putter, and mm. um, at first I was using this uh, the lie angle uh, balanced putter for a little bit, testing it out the Lab Golf, and then once I and I you know I didn't love it. Uh, it was good. It was good, but I just couldn't get my distances right, and then so I went back to my Seymour putter. And um, then Barney sent, had me put uh, Barney put this shaft on the the lab golf putter, and now I'm in love with it again. Um, my distance control is much better. My lines are much straighter where I'm, you know, directing them at. So I'm really enjoying it mm-hmm. a lot. But I do like I do like my Seymour putter a lot as well. So I'm kind of going well, back. Well, to and be forth. honest with you, to be, yeah. To be honest, I'm working. Andy Gorman is a he, he's one of the distributors for Seymour, and uh, I, I put a I put a shaft in his putter, and he, he just loves it. I actually sent sent a, put one on Instagram uh, yesterday. Um, Seymour sent a shaft, and um, there's a lot more coming through now. Seymour are actually, you know, waiting for the data, so that I think I think they're going to be interested in using it, but I'm not sure yet. Well, I think I hope they are because I can't see anything better out there. But uh, yeah, I use Seymour's, and uh, I, I've just I've done quite a few of those already in the last few weeks. Um, it's one of my favorite putters too. Yeah, I love that putter. I love their rifle scope technology. I think it's a brilliant technology that really helps line up your putts and give you much. Just you know, so important to give you more confidence when you're putting to have that line knowing yeah, knowing that you're on yeah. your line. 
Yeah, and, and like I tell most people when I'm talking about it, you know, when you, they say, well, what, how much difference does this shaft of yours make? I said, well, let's, you know, let's put it in, in, in numbers. How many parts can go wrong in a punching stroke? So if you take one of them away, you've got one less. And if you take the equipment problem away, then you've got one less. And that's a very important one. The equipment one is the shaft. Now, I'm not saying that every putter head's the best in the world, but uh, I'll come to that later. But uh, the shaft is definitely the most important part of putting, apart from alignment and uh, and pace. So if you've got alignment right and you've got pace right and your putter shaft's inferior, you'll miss a lot of putts. And the only way we can sort of describe that in layman's terms if you probably hear a lot of people say that if you're 10 feet or 12 feet away from the hole and your putter face is open one degree that's two inch miss even if you do everything right it's a two inch miss yeah. now if you miss a put it's down to either alignment pace you know or actually green read as well. Don't forget, you've got to get the green read right. So there's four or five parts of the putter that's very important. And if you've got a wobby shaft, then you're going to miss a lot more. So we've taken one of those away. The rest of them are down to the player. So the player really can't blame his equipment if he's got the best. He can't blame that. He's got to say, I've got to look at my technique. So it does focus players on that. And uh, that's why I think it's very important. But they don't really know. But when we show the data, at least they'll have some data to say, well, at least I've got what appears to be the most consistent shaft. So, and that's all we can really do for them. Wow, that's really fascinating. I'm curious, what was your aha moment that you realized that the uh, carbon fiber was going to be the exact thing you were looking for well i think it's the thing is really quite obvious really i'm i have to say all these all these companies um i'm surprised they didn't jump on it earlier i really am surprised because it's not rocket science it's rocket science maybe to put it together but it's not rocket science to think about it and one of the biggest reasons why uh put manufacturers or players they're used to this spindly type putter shaft. And I know that um, stability shaft had problems originally because their first one was too fat and it did look clumsy. And then they came out with the Pro Tour one, which is a lot narrower. And it, it's, a, it's a good shaft um, and it looks a lot better. Well, mine is full carbon. I don't have any steel in mine. Uh, unless it's one of those... Um, unexplainable double bend putters um, then you have to do what um, stability do you have to cut the shaft because you can't bend carbon in that position but um, that's the only thing that I don't like about fitting carbon mat to a putter if it's got a double bend on it I try and persuade the owner to go down into the hosel and if, if we want a double bend, then we make a double bend to go in there. But it's much more stable than a standard steel shaft, and it's much shorter. So the shorter it is, the stronger it is. And so you prefer a shorter shaft? Well, I want to say, no, no, not a shorter shaft. I'm talking about the difference between the shaft coming out of the head oh. and joining the carbon. Okay, okay. Uh, it, if you haven't got a double bend, then the carbon shaft will go right in, like a ping type putter, or a, you know a Scotty um, Newport type putter, or a Seymour goes right in. My my shaft goes right to the top of the head, so there's no steel deflection in there. There's no uh, original putter shaft in there. It's all carbon. Hundred percent carbon. Uh, okay, uh, that makes sense. And do you have any preference whether you have the shaft go into the heel or if it's a center shafted putter? 
if it was if it was me, I'd I'd be the Seymour type putter every time. Be center shafted. Yeah, because there's more chance of face opening if he hits off center. I, I think it's more, you know, it's if you hit it off the toe, nearer the toe, with a heel entry, I think it would probably open up more than it would if it was center shafted. I I couldn't agree with and, you more. And, and that's and that and that can be proved, but um, with Quintec, but the problem when they do that, human beings are holding the shaft, and so you don't really know whether it's down to them or whether it's down to the equipment. So when we're testing, like tomorrow, um, I'll be using on one of the one of the sessions. I'll be using the Seymour putter, but it's it's locked into a, a robot, so. The robot's not going to open the face. Everything, every distortion is down to the equipment. But when you see players using Quintec, uh, Americans use them a lot and use Quintec a lot, they're testing players to see what's going wrong. But really, they don't know if the put the face is open at strike one degree or closed at strike two de- one degree or two degrees, they could never really tell whether it's the player that's turning the club face open or closed or whether some of that is part of the shaft and that's what we're trying to eliminate so if 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 the coach knows that he's got a shaft that's pretty much no deflection and no twist then he's got to look at the player Mm. and then try and correct him right right and that's why it's important right Okay, we're gonna we're gonna take another quick time out because now I'm gonna go over and get my Seymour putter so I can hold that while we're talking too. So hang on, and I'll be right, I'll be back in a second. Okay. <laughs> this week on Golf Smarter Mulligans, we go back to a premium subscription members only episode in 2009 that has never been heard publicly before. This time, our conversation is with three-time Long Drive champion Sean Fister. Sean talks about his practice sessions, his workout, and his mental game. If you prepare yourself properly for a championship, you go in there with, at the most, three swing thoughts. That's it. I usually keep it down to one because by the time I'm at the world championship, I've already got everything done. I mean, I I know what I'm working on and I know where my tendencies are. And I've usually got one little swing thought I tell myself. And I'll tell you what, 22 years I've been competing. Every year I've got one tip that always ends up coming down to the wire as being my go-to tip. And that is keep your head behind the ball at impact. Don't slide. Don't let that left ear get past the golf ball for a right-hander. That's been my number one tip. And my number two tip, which is right behind it, is to stay still. And what I mean by that is not to move at all laterally. That's Sean the Beast Fister. This week on episode 114 of Golf Smarter Mulligans being released this Friday. Both Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans are available from the app you're listening to right now. Please subscribe and follow both so that you can get a brand new episode of either when it downloads to your favorite listening device. Okay, Raymond, I've pulled out my Seymour putter now. I've got the uh, M5X, which I think is just a beautiful, beautiful putter from yeah. Seymour. And on it, I have, uh, let's see, what is the shaft on this one? It's not telling me. It just says Seymour Putter Company Custom Lie and Loft Stability. Um, internal hosel design. Yeah, it does. It's just a metal shaft, but it looks like there's, it's metal, and then it's, well, I don't know if it's a black metal or just a uh, coloration about, about eight or nine. It's inches probably up. called. It's is it black all the way down? Is it black? No, it's silver, and then it's black for about the last nine or ten inches. Yeah, uh, it's probably it's well the black the last nine or ten inches. It, well, that's just painted. It's yeah. probably called PVD. It's it's it's, it's a coating they use PVD. It's very tough coating. It's better than paint. Uh-huh. Um, but that's steel. That's a steel shaft, standard steel shaft. I don't know which one Seymour use. It might be Nippon. It might be True Temper. It might be KBS. But I think if it was KBS, they'd have the logo on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would think so too. KBS, and, and... KBS is a little bit better. Much KBS is a little bit 
a little bit better than, than the standard ones. Uh, but usually, if Seymour used that shaft, I would imagine they keep KBS logo on the shaft. Right, right. Most people do. Yeah. Um, but uh, have you tested against the KBS as well? Mm-hmm. And how'd you do there? Yes, we did. Uh, off the top of my head, it was like 30%. Wow. We were 30% better. That's amazing. That K- is... KBS was the best. KBS was the best steel shaft. Hmm. Are you surprised at these results of how much better your carbon Mac uh, shaft is? Well, I'm, I'm not surprised that it's better, but I'm surprised that the launch angle and the deflection, some of the some of the uh, the, de- the the data from it. Yeah, I am surprised it's that big a gap. I'm, I knew the carbon, I knew the stability would be good because it's you know it's good carbon, but it's got it's not full and. Uh, it, it's 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 decent, very decent. I wouldn't I wouldn't um, say anything wrong about the stability shaft, but um, the fact that we're just a we're a bit better, and that's all you can really say. I wouldn't criticize anybody's product, but if I've got a product that I think's better, you know, I can say it's better. I think it's better. Sure. All all these com- all these companies, even when it comes to putters, I mean, what's what's the really best putter out there? I mean, Scotty Cameron's are like jewelry. Seymour, beautiful. You've got, you know, Even Roll. You've got Bettinardi. You've got lots of Odyssey, TaylorMade, all those guys, Callaway. They've all got really nice finished products. Mm-hmm. But what do they actually do? Do they do they still three put? <laughs> <laughs> that, is that yes, the putter? <laughs> yes, they do. Let's blame the golfer, not the putter. <laughs> yeah, blame well, Yeah, that's right. Well, you blame the golfer. Yeah, that's true. It is mostly the golfer. Yeah. But when you get down to the nitty gritty, I'm trying. What I'm trying to do is take out, eliminate the equipment failure. Right. The rest of it's down to you guys and me. You know, it's up to us then, and that's why putting is so difficult, and players just don't spend enough time. And money with a good coach. You know, a, a good coach, one one hour session, once a month, probably take three or four shots off your round if you're a mid handicap player, mid to high handicap. Absolutely. And they just don't do that. They don't. They just all they want is the driver, and most of them probably would never improve, no matter what they paid for a driver shaft. Right. It's only the big boys that move move the ball that far. And even Tiger Woods, or if you gave Duchambo the best shaft in the world, and then you gave that same, uh, his last shaft he had, you'd probably find there was one yard difference, maybe two, the max, and you're talking about one of the biggest beefers on the, on the planet. <laughs> but for the average golfer, all they want to do is hit boomers, whether it's 220 or 360. That's all they want to do. And when they get on the putting green, and drop three shots. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, they should the, all, and it's the only part of the game where you don't need strength, you don't need fitness, you just need patience and technology and technique. Anybody can put well. There's, I know a few players at my club, 24 handicap and 18 handicap, probably better putters than Brad Faxon was. <laughs> but can they hit the ball on the fairway? No. Nope. Can they get out of a bunker? No. You get them on the green, and they can do the damage. So those guys are rare. But most good golfers, really, when I've spoken to them, are not really looking at spending 200 or $300 on a putter shaft. They go, hmm, that's expensive. So how much you pay for your driver? $400? How many times you hit the fairway? You know? How many times does it make you any money? Very rare when you're an amateur. Right. And we are talking about most of the game is amateurs, so... Yeah, oh yeah, who not, still not are struggling talk, to break 100, talk, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. I remember the average handicap in America when I was doing the club making, I think, was uh, hadn't changed in 15 years. Wow. You know, and that was about 10 years ago. So I don't believe it's much better now. I bet you've got the average handicap for a player in America 
I'll bet you haven't changed two shots. Right. No, I think you're right. I yeah. think you're right. Yeah. It's interesting because that it'll prove that. even at the PGA Championship um, at, at Keo Island that we just witnessed, there were mm. a lot of short pus- putts missed, right? I mean, it is the golfer. These are the best guys in the world, and they've got three foot out. Brooks Kepka missing like a three, four yeah. footer. It's like, ooh, it hurts to see that, but boy, it feels great to know that we're not the only ones. Yeah, and, and, and there's a lot of reasons for that, and I don't know, he would argue, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't like to argue with him for sure. <laughs> but uh, but having said that, he, if he was confident, if he, I, I like to sort of make a silly comment here. Well, it's a bit of a promotional comment. If he'd have had, let's, let's be fair and give Stability Shaft some, some good PR. If he'd had a Stability Shaft or a Carbon Mac in his putter, I don't think he'd have missed some of those puts. I think he'd have been so confident. Now, when they lose confidence, the game goes completely, obviously. Now, he he lost confidence on the greens. Now, whether it's just the inner, the inner person, and he, he expected Mickelson to, to start going the wrong way, I don't know. But he didn't play well. But he didn't put well either. And yeah. neither, to be honest, neither did Mickelson. Mickelson missed a lot of putts that he would normally get, probably through tension. But they've all still got standard shaft putters, which is amazing to me. I can't believe somebody like Mickelson, who studies, loves putting, and I'm sure Brooks Kepka and all these guys do that, but they're not looking at their equipment. They're looking at their scores and their technique. They're not looking at their equipment. And especially long puts, you know, you get a put 30 foot and it's uphill, puts a lot of stress on on a putter shaft, even even on a putter shaft at five miles an hour pace, six miles an hour max. Um, but that, that shaft will distort. And then once it runs offline, it's offline. Whether it's a right line or a wrong line, who knows? But I'm pretty sure I'd guarantee if players had a more stable putter shaft, they would improve, you know, across the board at least 1.5, 1.2.5 1.5 strokes around. A pro, maybe 0.5 of a shot, maybe one stroke around. But it's 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 a lot of it's a tour pro, one stroke around. You ask Bruce Kepka if he would like to get one more stroke around on the greens. Yeah, right. You bite your hand off. Yeah. Well, yeah, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to have Brooks Kepka giving me the stink look. He'd scare me. <laughs> no, neither would I. <laughs> wow, <laughs> the stink face. Um, so I'm curious. I know that you have Carbon Mac. Uh, your shafts are on Instagram, uh, and not yeah. many other places can be found. What is the availability of these shafts now, and when can well, we well, hope to see them um, for everybody? Well, what I well I'm actually working with Titleist at the moment. Um, they're testing my shaft, and I, and I know I've you know TaylorMade have got one of mine, and uh, you know I'm waiting for that sort of sort of um, business to come my way okay. if it does. And the reason and the reason is um, Brian, the reason is for that because it's made in the UK. Um, sending shafts to America for a retail would be you know it's a bad business. Yeah. Um, but if you, if somebody like Titleist or TaylorMade were using them and they were selling those shafts out like they do their putters and their clubs, then it would it would certainly be very available then and they would benefit from it and so would all the other golfers. So at this moment in time, we're quite small, but we're getting bigger. And after the data this week, then you'll you'll see it around a lot because... You know, we're, we're sort of building. We haven't got a big website. We haven't got a glossy page. It's very basic, but it works. And uh, I, I do understand what you're saying. Not many people know about it yet, but uh, they will do soon. Yeah, I it's hope very so. difficult to go from. It's very difficult to go from zero to a hundred. You know, it's very difficult. Well, but we are moving quite quickly, like I said. Oh, that's great. Well, the internet age, sometimes people do go from zero to 100 in just a few seconds, and it's kind of scary because they're not prepared for that. <laughs> so, no. no, I wish you luck. I hope I hope it goes well and that um, that we do 
uh, have the ability to pick them up here in the um, in the U.S. Uh, are your I'm I'm sure that you are covered legally with your patents and whatnot when you're working with companies like Titleist and TaylorMade and all these large companies that are have no problem saying, hey, that's a great idea. We can do that ourselves. Yeah, yeah, of course you can. Well, why haven't you done it already? Well, yeah. now, but why when somebody walks in the door, when somebody small walks in the door and says, I've done this, I, I've witnessed personally that they have no problem stepping on top of you going, yeah, we've got this now. Yeah, I understand that. And do you know something else? I don't know if you're aware of this. Tell me what you think of this for a business. We do not accept unsolicited ideas. Now, what kind of a business program is that? Henry Ford would have been in trouble if somebody said that to him, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think that's just uh, why people have NDAs signed. If they're, they're concerned that they're going to get sued later down the road. I... I was working with an organization once, and I said, hey, I've got this idea of something. And he goes, sorry, I can't accept your idea. It's like, okay, never mind. You know, it was like, you know, they, they're so worried about someone coming back later going, you stole my idea. I want millions out of it. Well, no, I, I, I don't. I, I really don't. I don't really don't believe that because if, if, you, if, I, if I go to Titleist and say, look, I've got this, and if it's, if it's a patent, if it's not a patent, then... You know, they can do what they like. But if it, is, it isn't a patent and it's a good idea, they should welcome that and say, look, yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, we're willing to uh, talk some business with you. Yeah. Instead, they just say, we don't accept unsolicited ideas. Wow. Now, if that was the case, and it is the case with most of them, what are they doing? Where's their research and development doing? Is it the fact that, I'm stepping on the research and development toes. I don't know. They should say, hey, this is a good idea. Can we talk to you about it? Say, yeah, of course you can. That's why I'm getting in contact with you. Most of the time, they just dismiss you. And then all of a sudden, when somebody else, when somebody else comes on board, they say, oh, hey, this is a good idea. Can we have some of this? You know, it's, to me, it's a very poor business way of handling things. And you've got to start somewhere. Every every design and every product that we hold every day comes from somewhere. Now, does it always come from the big companies? No. Of course not. Most of it doesn't. Right. Most of it doesn't. So why try steal it? Or why, try, why not just say, that's a good idea. Is anybody else helping you? No. Well, we'd like to help you. Bring it to the market. That's what they should be saying. Yeah. And I know they must get millions of you know, idiots out there. But when it's time for something that looks good, they should step on it. And they don't. Yeah, I'm having that. I'm having that now. I'm having that now. So I'm curious, um, if I wanted to try a Carbon Mac shaft from you and they say, put it on my Seymour putter, is it the type of thing that my club fitter could uh, do the installation yeah. of this shaft? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because it fits any... Any, as long as I know which put it is, we make an adapter to fit everything. Okay. Okay. Right. So when it came when it came to your plug fitter, it would be ready to go straight into your head. Oh, fabulous! Fabulous. You know, a child of nine could do it. Well, Raymond, thank you so much for reaching out to me uh, and and sharing this information. I'm I'm really uh, flattered and honored that you you thought that uh, this would be good for the Golf Smarter audience. I think it is very good for the Golf Smarter yeah. audience, although I'm sure they're now anxious with anticipation of when it can be available so they can get one for themselves. Yeah, sure. Well, hopefully from the conversations, we might be able to organize that. Yep, that would be really good. Thank you so and much. That's how things start, Brian. Thank you, Brian. It's Fred, but that's okay. You can call me Brian. No one ever calls me Brian. <laughs> people, usually when people get my name wrong, they call me um, Jeff. It's the weirdest thing. That's okay. But Brian? That's I'll take right. Brian. That's good. Thank you. Take Brian. Or oh, Billy. Would you like Billy? <laughs> nah, Billy doesn't work for me. <laughs> and listen, one more thing, Raymond. Um, I'm going to be keeping my eyes open for Joshua McMahon and uh, hoping that he does really well and we get to see him play professionally and maybe even have you on his back. That would be pretty amazing. Well, it uh, would be. I'd have to lose it. 
I'd have to lose a bit of weight and go into training for, for the Olympics, but I'd certainly be walking there anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, best of luck to him and best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs> So I wrote to Raymond immediately after we recorded this conversation in late May, almost a month ago, but have yet to hear back from him. And as of now, the only way to get more about Raymond's putter shaft is to follow him on Instagram at Carbon Mac, one word, Carbon, C-A-R-B-O-N, Mac. Or it looks like he's also put up a Twitter account uh, since we spoke. It, that's at, at Carbon Mac S. M-A-C-S, Carbon Mac S. So uh, now let me ask you this. How do you feel about tipping? Not at a restaurant, but at the golf course. Are the services provided by your caddy, the beverage cart person, or the kids who clean your clubs worthy of a couple of extra bucks after each round? Well, I bring that up because I'd like you to think about Golf Smarter as a service to enhance every round you play. Based on the emails and feedback I get from listeners, both Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans provide you with thoughtful insights and advice every week that make a difference. Which is why I'd like you to notice our tip cup on the homepage at golfsmarter.com. I talked about our new donate button last week and have been humbled by your response so far, but instead of thinking of it as a donation or a premium subscription, I'd like you to consider leaving me a tip for providing weekly entertainment. Not required, but greatly appreciated. And what about golfsmarter.com? It's much more than just the Hey Fred button, which I realized while I was walking the dog this morning is all I ever talk about as far as our website's concerned. When you go to GolfSmarter.com, you'll be able to play the latest Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans episodes right from our homepage. You'll also see the latest posts from Golf Smarter TV, our YouTube channel, plus our social media posts on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. There's uh, links there to a variety of different ways to listen that take you directly to the apps that offer our programs, uh, including uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Amazon, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and more. And also, while you're on the homepage, you can get a taste of what other Golf Smarter listeners have said in their reviews on Apple Podcasts. There are links to our sponsors. And of course, each episode gets a dedicated blog post that include all the links we discuss in each episode. But everything revolves really around our flagship, and that is Golf Smarter. So please follow at Golf Smarter on social media, especially Instagram, and please subscribe to Golf Smarter TV on YouTube for additional and different golf content. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, just click on the Hey Fred button at GolfSmarter.com.